Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and although I'm a trustee of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and the president of the Grassroot Institute, the comments I make to you today are in my private capacity and do not necessarily reflect the views of any institution. Hawaii took the long route to increasing consumer choice at the airport, but finally we've arrived there, or at least we're getting there. After a lengthy negotiation, the state has granted Uber and Lyft permission to pick up passengers from two designated areas at Inouye International Airport. Now, for travelers frustrated by long lines and lack of options, the absence of the two popular ride-sharing companies was very confusing. Why limit a transportation option at a major vacation destination when other airports are doing it all the time? Well, the answer comes down to regulation. Because taxi companies in Hawaii are heavily regulated, they protested, and probably rightly so, the fact that Uber and Lyft were not forced to compete on the same playing field. The best solution from a free market perspective would be to re-examine and ease the regulatory burden on cab companies as well. But the state went a different route, often spread red tape around a bit more. So like taxi drivers, Uber and Lyft drivers will have to pay for the privilege of picking up airport passengers. The pilot program requires the rideshare drivers to pay 7% of each fare to the Department of Transportation, the airport's division. But rideshare drivers are still not allowed to solicit customers and they cannot wait at the airport. Uh, they're limited to prearranged pickups only. Uber estimates that a ride from the airport to downtown will cost about $17, to Waikiki about $24, and to Kapolei it'll run about $36. Well, more competition does mean that customers should benefit from shorter waits at the airport. And while this is a trial program for now, if things go well, the temporary three-month permit could become permanent. It's at least an important first step toward increasing consumer choice, along with creating new jobs and opportunities in Hawaii. However, we shouldn't forget the fact that the state regulations slowed availability of ride sharing in the first place. And the reality is this, if Hawaii wants to remain economically competitive, we should be looking for ways to decrease state involvement in the market, both for cabs and for ride share vehicles, and not weigh everyone down equally. But that's probably good enough for now. I'm Kaylee Akina, wishing you aloha.